I'll do ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, it's Yorkshire Blazeman here, and today I'm doing another episode of Historically Traditional. This is the series I do when I go and review for you and tell you information about historical and traditional knives and bayonets and all sorts of things like that. So let's just get into the video. <music> So this is episode 2, 3 sorry, of Historically Traditional and today I shall be re reviewing for you the Soviet Union AK-47 bayonet. Now, that sounds quite brief doesn't it? Just the AK-47 bayonet, no numbers, not like the um, Swedish model 1836 or the Enfield SMOE bayonet. This is just simply called the Soviet, the USSR AK-47 bayonet. Now, there are variations of this, and I believe the Chinese called it, there's a Chinese model of this, and the Chinese called it the Chinese Type 1, I believe. But, um, this is just a standard Russian AK-47 bayonet, the 6x2 AK-47 bayonet. Now, you'll be wondering, why on earth would you put a bayonet on a machine gun? Because during the f First and Second World War, bayonets were only used and attached onto Rifles, for example, this rare Portuguese Mauser bayonet made by Simpsons & Co. in Seoul, Germany. This was attached onto the Portuguese Figuero rifle and that made sense for bayonet charges and to make the rifle into a spear. However, you cannot make a machine gun, an AK-47, into a spear because the AK is nowhere near as long as a rifle, for instance. Well, if we compare it to a Russian rifle, the Mosin Nagant, which was mainly uh, was the well-used Russian rifle during World War Two. The AK, well, was not made in World War Two, as we all know, because if it did, then it would have been unstoppable. So, this... Yeah, so right. This AK-47 rifle, rifle bayonet, was attached and used for the first AK-47 rifle. Now, the AK-47 rifle was produced and um, made. Well, say also known as the, also say, it's also known as a Kalashnikov. Just to let you know, so it was produced in 1949 and it's been used worldwide in many other conflicts such as the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, the Moro Conflict, South African Border War, Vietnam War, Ogaden War, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur War, and there's many, 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 many more. So the designer of the AK-47 was, was Mikhail Kalashnikov, and he designed it from 1946 to 1949, sorry, 1946 and 1948, my apologies. But it was in service since 1949 because the government had to test it and had to decide whether or not to invest in it and make it the standard service uh, machine gun. The uh, AK, first AK design was in 762 times 39 millimeters and it's always stayed in that. And um, it is one of the world's most iconic rifle ever. So the design of the AK became in 1945 and was presented for military trials and in 1948, the fixed stock version was introduced into active service with the selected units of the Soviet Army. An early development of the design was with was the AKS, um, which was equipped with an underfolding metal shoulder stock. In the early 1949, the AK-47 was officially accepted by the Soviet Armed Forces and used by the majority of member states of the Warsaw Pact. Now, the Warsaw Pact was all the Eastern Communist countries version of NATO, which is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which, went, which was after World War II, the threat of Russia was apparent to Winston Churchill, as he called it, the Iron Curtain, and he appealed to the world, America and all the Allies, that Russia was a threat of the turn communist. A lot of bickering and stuff went on, and relationships went down the drain, they were absolutely fucked up, and, as we all know, the east was blocked up from the west, and that was separated by east and west Germany, split down the line, stopping, well, separating the west of western Europe and eastern Europe. Now, NATO was formed, 
the North Atlantic Treaty Organization by uh, many, basically U Western Europe and America, and now many other countries have joined, which is an organization saying that if you attack us, one of our members will attack you. So say, if Russia said, right, fuck it, we're going to attack Spain for their olives and their tapas, then England, France, Portugal and America will go, you're attacking our mate, we want those tapas, piss off, and we're going to kill you. Whatever. So you get the pat idea. So then, Mr. Stalin thought, whoa, 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 if Western Europe have NATO, we need something like that. So then they developed the Warsaw Pact, uh, which was Poland, Hungary, Yugoslavia, which who actually left, I forgot when, and um, all the Eastern European countries, basically the communist version of NATO. So, why am I telling you about the gun? Because this bayonet goes on the gun. Which is also which is important, because you want to know some information of the weapon it went on. And why, you know, they decided to put a bayonet onto such an iconic rifle. And how it changed over the years. I'm just going to tell you that over, of the estimated 500 million firearms worldwide, approximately 100 million belong to the Kalashnikov family three quarters of which are AK-47s. There are very, very, very many different types of AKs. Um, the 47, the 74, the 47U. It is just unbelievable how many AKs were produced and why they were produced um, by different countries and why so many people actually wanted to have uh, this rifle. So. As I said, it was a well popu popular rifle and it was used by countries such as Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Angola, Armenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Burkina Faso. Many, many countries have used these as a national service rifle or for wars to quickly buying something in or for militia groups such like Al Qaeda, uh, the Viet Cong, all types of things. So this rifle has been used for bloody centuries, no, not really centuries, but it's been used for a long time, uh, on which the Americans made the M16 rifle to counter the uh, AK-47. So that's enough about the rifle. We know that it's a popular rifle, uh, who developed it, why it was developed, when it was developed, the maker, um, and this bayonet went on, the original the very first ever production um, AK before they changed it uh, to the new system. So, this bayonet, the AK-47 bayonet, was used with, for the 7.62mm Kalashnikov AK-47 rifle, produced in, well, as I said, 1950, this bayonet was produced from 1953 to 1959 at the Ishevik Arsenal in Russia. Now, for six years, this was the rifle bayonet of choice for the Russian army. Then it had changed to the type. Well, I haven't got it, but it changed to the type one with. I've, I've got two different ones. Um, the one, this one's actually a transitional, but. And this is actually um, another transitional, but it changed from the Type One with um, a metal scabbard with an insulator to um, this style shape. The back, unfortunately, is missing of this one with a um, a different type of um, sheath. And then they decided, bugger it. We're going to have a mix up here. We've got so many different types of bayonets, and people will. Well, what I can only imagine was there was a mixture of them, and they thought, why not? Let's combine it. So they took the Type 1 um, uh, bayonet, that was the Type 2, as I said, and they, p they redesigned the sheath to this Baker like plastic, which you didn't need the insulator on because plastic, plastic is not a conductant of electricity. So when you were operating the wire cutters you wouldn't get an electric shock. Now this was copied by the American M9 bayonet. Fun fact. So, but we're not talking about these ones, we're talking about the original, the very first AK-47 bayonet. So, what we have here, we have a very slick um, steel scabbard 
with a leather frog, which is the only bane that I have with the frog attached, which is quite interesting and quite sudden as it's in itself. So, yeah, leather frog, and we have a unique system. So we have a baker like handle here with a stainless steel back bit, and as I said, very different system uh, in releasing it. Now, you may be thinking, this looks quite modern, this patina, well, it's actually this grey colour on the uh, scabbard. This is not a repo, it's not being sprayed on, this is actually what it was, which is amazing to think that, you know, they've gone from that to, you know, clear uh, satin finish. But it's not the first thing that I've seen with that on. The Portuguese Mauser bayonet has a black finish, and that's not been sprayed on, that's actually how it was produced. So, if you, if you have a bayonet and you see stuff like that on, don't always feel uh, scared at first that bloody hell some bastard spray painted it and ruined it. That is not the case. So the leather frog is attached with two uh, pins here, which hide in here, and which also is attached on with these two metal clamps. So it's a very slick design, just like a normal rifle scabbard, just a long, uh, narrow piece of metal keeping the knife firmly, or bayonet firmly in place. So, some more information. The reason for the unusual grip, which you can see here, and if I compare it to, say, a more, uh, the, sec the type 1 um, handle, was because, and this is where we get into it, um, and the second partial, the reason for the unusual grip and the second partial muzzle ring was that the bayonet was an afterthought. The AK-47 had not been officially designed to accept the bayonet. Now, if we take modern firearms today, um, you have a bayonet on. But a bayonet can do multi-purpose tasks, like the Type 1 could have a cutter on it, a wire cutter, a saw, and many other functions. Back in World War Two, standard infantry soldiers who were basically equipped with white rifles had your bayonet and a small knife. A small knife to do your personal tasks, and then your big bayonet for your fight for your fighting knife, which we can see in the American armed service. They had the M. They had the M1 Grand bayonet, and then they also have a K-bar fighting knife. But a K-bar could also be used as multi-purpose tasks. Machine gunners, um, soldiers who had a machine gun, so the Russian MP40, the British Dengun, or the Russian PPSH, they couldn't attach a bayonet onto it, so they, because at such a rapid rate of fire, why did they need a bayonet? So they just had a fighting knife with them. So this is why the Russians thinking, let me move this out of the way, right, we have a automatic rifle, we don't need a bayonet to put on it, which is why they didn't, but then they thought, however, why have our soldiers carrying an insufficient knife um, at all? You know, why carry two knives or carry one? Therefore, sorry about the cut of my camera down. Therefore, they decided that they wanted the knife to be multi purpose. So instead of the uh, machine gunner or the rifleman having just a standard knife, fighting knife. Why not also make it into a bayonet? Because it's not going to really affect it at all, you know. You'd be better to keep the enemy at bay if you haven't got any ammo of your AK. And also, you could make it into a spear to get extra length. You know, possibility thinking, right, what could we do? So then they designed the bayonet to go with it. So the soldiers wouldn't need an extra knife. So they could use this as a multi-purpose knife as well. So the food prep for... Um, Cutting wood, well, I wouldn't recommend it, even though it is a, a solid uh, knife, maybe you think it's full tang, but, you know, so they had just the bare minimum, you know, they didn't need a load of equipment, they could go out with a few essentials and be fine, be root with it. So this is what they designed with. Now, if we look at the style of the two bayonets, so this is the Type 1 handle. And we take it from the original, it is 
in a way similar but quite different. So, for the Type 1 to, you slide the bayonet on to the rifle, barrel comes through here and it locks onto a back bit. Um, like a piece of metal hanging here, that's the, um, I think it's the rifle, and there's a bit of metal underneath it, fixing it into place, so that's your bayonet. And to take the bayonet off, you press down the stud here, it releases, pushes the, wire, uh, the rod in, and then the little clips where you can see there, and then that's your bayonet off and you can put it back into your sheath. With the original one, that's a different story. So as you can see, we have the ring here, and then it sweeps up like so with a, a cut-out rifle hold here. So because the original rifle didn't have that um, metal bit because it was all a one single barrel, the barrel went through the ring and also latched on to the sides here instead of the box, a uh, little metal box at the bo bottom of the barrel to keep it in place. Now at first glimpse it's, you're looking where the bloody hell is the release. You know, it's no good sticking it on and not being able to take it off. Now this is where it is here. So you pull that down and there are two forks located here inside the handle and as you pull those down they come down and then the bayonet is released. They will have slotted in the grooves underneath the into the barrel to allow the bayonet to fit on. If we look at um, the difference, so the bayonets will get attached like this. If we look at the original AK bayonet we can see that it's a spear pointed blade similar to the normal bayonets used in World War II. If we take the Type 1 we can see we have a clip point blade shape so when it's a multi-purpose knife, it is fine, you can do your tax, uh, tassing and use it for skinning. If you manage to find an am a animal, well, snare animals, so you can eat it. But also, when it's presented like this, you can still have a penetration as you have the clip point and the swedge here. So it still can be used like a spear bayonet. But also, this edge here was used for wire cutting. So this is how they redeveloped it and adapted to make the bayonet more of a utility piece of equipment. But we're not talking about a Type 1, we're talking about the original bayonet. So to go over some more features which I uh, left out, as on the Bakelite handle we have two pins secured here. Two flat, uh, flat heads here, screws, so you can take it off if you do damage anything, and then they are two flatheads here but they have a pin pushed through them, hammered in, to secure it. So to make sure that the bayonet would not, the handles will not come off. Even though the design is quite strange, it is very comfortable in the hand. Because you have the security here and security here locking your hand into the bayonet handle. If I compare it to the Type 1, it's bigger, I haven't got much grip because this is smooth if my hand got sweaty or bloody it would slip down and you would have to hold it really tight with this it is very hard for my hand to slip out because the second ring just covers all of my fingers so if I'm thrusting slashing my hand is secure into the bayonet so if we take it, so why would you, as I said, why would it be like the design? Because they wanted to minimise on equipment and it was important for soldiers to carry a bayonet on them at all times because it was important to carry a knife. The steel scabbard is a clone of the later M1940 uh, SVT scabbard. Russian scabbards typically have a drain hole in, front, in the front side of the scabbard it has an integ integral web belt hanger with a leather hilt strap. So, as I said, it would have had a drainage hole, which you can see here. I need to take this off, though. Right there. So when you're wading through the swamps or water off the Russian lakes, freezing cold water on training missions, your the water can take can seep out and not 
clog up into the scabbard and corrode the knife. This knife is a stainless steel, of course it was typical steel, I don't know what type of steel it is, but yeah, unfortunately I do not know. Do I know where this knife is manufactured? It is manufactured in Ischevik Arsenal, as I said, this is where they were manufactured. But however, I have not found any markings on the bayonet at all. Now maybe because they just worn away over time or whatever, I am not sure. If anyone knows where the original markings are, let me know on these because I've had a look, tried to have a look, but I cannot find anything. Now, you may say this could be a reproduction, and it may well be. However, I picked this up from Tenants Auctions in, the, in Leyburn in the UK. And if anyone knows Tenants Auctioneers, then you know they have the specialists, and they, if it's a fake or reproduction, they have to um, say it. And they check it through with specialists who make sure that it's all pristine and check. Now, they very well could be hidden under here, on which. Actually, just thinking that, should should check that. Um, but you never know. There is still the grease on the scabbard here. Well, you no, know, I don't think you want to know that. But um, this bayonet is in mint condition, and um, they are not very a very functional piece. If I have to be honest with you. If you're going to want to use a bayonet for everyday purpose carry or when you go out into the woods instead of taking a more traditional fixed blade or anything like that then it's better to go with the tight one because the tight one is a more uh, multifunctional tool. This is primarily function is for stabbing and injuring people and causing bodily harm. Yet for a collector, for collector's purposes, it's always nice to have the original on what started um, the very first, which then led into all the different types of AK bayonet. So I'm going to go over some. Oh, going to go over some specs. So the overall blade length of this AK-47 bayonet is 7.875 centimeters, I believe. Inches, sorry, and then millimeters that is 200. It is 12.25 inches overall length, and in millimeters that accumulates to 311. The diameter ring is 6.95 inches, the main one here that goes into the barrel, and that is four, uh, sorry, that is 17.7 millimeters. Oh, what else to say about this bayonet? So yeah, it only saw a few years in service in uh, standard military equipment, unlike the Type One hand, Type One bayonet and the Type Two and the transitional, which this one is. This is a Russian transitional uh, from the Ishevik uh, manufactory. So the AK-47 bayonet, the original one, is a classic piece to have for any collector to own and it's very cool to say that you have the, one of the, the original bayonet for the most iconic rifle in the world because many people don't think about the bayonet they think about the rifle and if you have the bayonet to go with said rifle then you are complete. It's also a very um, interesting piece to have of history if you are like collecting that and to see how they have adapted changed over time if I I have three AK bayonets as I said, so the original, then you had the Type 2, and then the Transitional. Now, before I finish this video, um, I just want to leave off with a request to anyone who's watching who knows anything about AK bayonets. I'm not a, a big uh, know-it-all about them. I know only a few things what I can research. So there's a few questions I have for anyone out here who is an AK fanatic. Um, I think this is a, a Model 2. Double check because that is missing unfortunately. 
there is a mark markings here on the uh, maybe if I zoom in because as if you are a regular of my channel you will notice that my camera's zooming in function is appalling as we can see that little mark there if anyone knows what that means let me know also on the handle here it says K100 so if you know what it is let me know also if you know what the markings for this one is as well that would be a great help so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you next time in the next episode of Historically Traditional many thanks